We'll take it a little slow on this episode of the Paw Report. Coming up, we're joined by Douglas Hart Nature Center volunteer and educator Dakota Radford to talk all things turtles. We'll explore different types and much, much more. So stay with us. Okaw Vet Clinic in Tuscola and Dr. Sally Foote remind you to properly take care of your pets and are happy to help support the Paw Report on WEIU. Okaw Vet Clinic located at 140 West Sales Street in downtown Tuscola. More information available at okawvetclinic.com. Dave's Decorating Center is a proud supporter of the Paw Report on WEIU. Dave's Decorating Center features the Mohawk Smart Strand Silk Forever Clean Carpet. Dave's Decorating Center, Authorized Mohawk Color Center in Charleston. Thanks for joining us for this edition of the Paul Report. We are talking turtles on this episode, kind of rhymes, and it's a fascinating episode that we have ahead for you today. And you know, an episode just wouldn't be so awesome unless we had some live critters joining us on the set. And uh, here with the live critters is Dakota Radford. She's an educator and also an instructor, volunteer over at the Douglas Hart Nature Center in Mattoon. And we love, love, love having Dakota because she fills up the table with goodies. She brings lots of fun stuff, and that's exactly what you did today. Turtles is the topic, and lots of turtles are in the wild. We see them all over. We see them in the road. We see them in the ditches, our yards, and everywhere else. There's a lot to know about turtles. <laughs> so it'd, be, it'd be pretty hard to miss turtles in our state, wouldn't it? I think yes. everyone has noticed them, um, even just crossing the road, you know, that typical problem of turtles wandering across the highway at their slow pace. So mm -hmm. thank you for having me on to share You're some welcome. of the fascination of these weird reptiles. Weird <laughs> reptiles that some people like to keep in captivity. <laughs> That's right. They can be everything from pets to your dinner to your wild wildlife viewing outdoors. So turtles kind of affect our lives in a number of ways. And here in Illinois, we're lucky to actually be home to 17 different species of turtles. And I think that's what makes it hard to miss around here. Whether you're on land or at the water, there's gonna be a turtle species present making that its habitat. Um, I think when I think of turtle species, you got your box turtle and you got your snapping turtle, but there's a lot more. That's right, right. To get to our 17 species, we've got all kinds of varieties and some are more common than others. Now the snapping turtle and the box turtle you mentioned are some of our most common here in Illinois. But out of those 17, we actually have six different species of Illinois endangered turtles and a species mm. that is threatened here in Illinois. Mm. So some of these are um, a bit more rare to add to your list and you may have to go to a very specific location to mm -hmm. locate them. As you what are some of the rare ones? Yeah, so um, our Blandings turtle is a state endangered turtle as well as the alligator snapping turtle. Ooh. And I couldn't bring one in today. I'm not ready to lift a 200 pound turtle, uh, nor do I have one in my, wow. in my vicinity. But if you haven't ever seen an alligator snapper, that's definitely something you'll wanna look up. Just an incredibly large prehistoric looking turtle. Um, but down even to the smaller ornate box turtles, our state's only uh, threatened species of turtle mm -hmm. um, is on that list as well of having its habitat endangered to the point that it's starting to disappear from this area. You do so many different things at Douglas Hart. You've been on to talk about bees and birdhouses and fun stuff, but you do get a fair amount of calls from people about turtles. What are some of the things people yeah. ask you? Well, that's, that's a great question because um, there are th misconceptions and questions that we all have about turtles. For instance, mm -hmm. what do we do with that turtle who's crossing the road? Mm -hmm. And um, we certainly encourage you to break for him, but to actually make sure that you're setting him on the side of the road he was heading for. Uh, Well-intentioned um, replacing to the opposite side of the road will just get that turtle to try to head across again after you've left. So we always recommend taking note of what direction the turtle was heading in when you stopped. 
as well we get a lot of calls about pet turtles and uh, one of the interesting things about making the choice to take a turtle in as a pet is that you have to keep in mind the long lives of these creatures. They're um, extremely interesting in that a hundred year old turtle has essentially the same um, organ vitality as a five-year-old turtle. They really don't show that breakdown of the body and the organs, which is leading scientists to be quite interested mm -hmm. in, you know, finding medical research from how their bodies work. But by being able to survive that long, turtles can make a controversial pet. It may be the right choice for some people, but we always have to consider looking ahead, do I have the interest and even the physical ability to care for a turtle for the next 50 to 100 years. And oftentimes um, we'll find that by creating pets from these creatures, further down the road we're creating pets that are in need of a new mm -hmm. home. So your advice is maybe let that turtle cross the road and go out to its nat natural habitat for I, now. I do recommend that. I think um, as fascinating as they are, it's, it's neat to maybe give one an inspection and set it on its way and keep watching for more to come by. <laughs> um, some well, of these I'm, turtles are hard to hard to turn down though. They're yeah, so I'm excited. Neat What'd looking. you bring? So one of the turtles that is very common here in Illinois is the Eastern Box Turtle. And this is a fascinating turtle. He's a little dusty today. He's been playing around in his bedding. <laughs> this turtle um, is completely terrestrial. You'll notice he doesn't have webbed feet. He actually isn't capable of swimming, even if he tried. So this is a turtle you would find in the prairie or in the forest, um, wandering around. Oh, and that is one of the defense <laughs> mechanisms if a predator is coming to make a little mess there. But we won't, we won't mind. Um, no, we've had uh, we've had everything <laughs> on this set. So <laughs> you'll welcome notice. To, welcome to the Paul Report, Turtle. <laughs> there you go. Well, thank you. He's he's not a very shy guy. This one um, does live with us at the Nature Center as an educational turtle and meets lots of um, visitors and children. And because of that, he's taken this really outgoing personality that you wouldn't normally see in a box turtle. Typically, if they were approached by big humans like us or a hungry raccoon, they would close up their shell using this hinged piece um, and seal their legs, their tail, and their head completely inside the turtle shell to protect them from danger. Mm -hmm. This sort of box system allows the box turtle to have such a pleasant, uh, what we would call personality. He's a bit stress-free and not prone to getting upset by encounters with uh, people or life in general. Mm -hmm. But what you'll see in a little bit is some turtles are, don't have the same protection system a box turtle does, and that's going to lead to a little bit more defensive behaviors in other species. Anything about the shell, is it's kind of painted. Um, yeah. Is that kind of distinct, and I know we're, we're going to get to some other turtles, but is that a distinct... Um you're right. Marking? Yes, this, uh, this shell is, um, you can actually use the markings to determine if it's an eastern box turtle, like either of these two, or the uh, more rare state threatened in, um, ornate box turtle, which has a little bit different patterning on the shell. There is actually a bone at the base of this shell, which you can sort of see on this example. That's a actual bone the turtle grows with its body but it's covered in these colorful scoots what we call scoots on top and these are actually believe it or not fingernail material what hmm. we call keratin the same thing that our hair and nails are formed out of so and that's on the bottom part of the shell Th that's right, right it's right on here. the top surface as well as the bottom this is what we call the carapace and the plastron here and it's just a protective surface to keep these turtles safe from predators um, it's a it's a very nifty way to protect your vital organs there it's interesting to compare these two turtle shells actually and i'm going to make him uncomfortable for just a moment to do that you can almost see the indentation in this turtle shell and um, this indicates this shell would have been from a feet, from a male turtle, I'm sorry, whereas this flat-shelled turtle is more likely female, able mm. to uh, have room to carry eggs in there. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's one of the ways we can sort of tell if our turtle is male or female. Male or female. Now, how big will this guy get? And 
how long will he live? Sure, this is actually a full-grown box turtle, uh, maybe even on the big side. This is, um, this is as big as they'll get, typically. They uh, wander around the forest and eat berries and insects, and these are ones that can live up to 100 years, sometimes oh even longer in captivity. However, what I find really fascinating is that these are common in Illinois, and you may have seen one wander into your yard before, but internationally, the international community has identified this species as threatened. So worldwide, we're seeing a um, significant decline in their numbers. So how fortunate are we to live in a place mm -hmm. where these are still something we can see almost any day? Yeah, and it seems like we see a lot of them now. And oh we're, yes. We're filming this in, in the end of June, but we see it seems like there's a lot of them out uh, and about now. You know, he's very curious. Normally when you <laughs> when you see a turtle, and I'm sure in his case they, they quickly retract into their shell. He's very personable. Yes, you can certainly tell this one has had that human interaction. Um, a turtle in the wild would have retreated into his shell by now. Is he a herbivore or a carnivore? He is a little bit of an omnivore. So most turtles uh, do get a little bit of both in their diet. They'll eat uh, vegetation insects. and berries, but also insects in the water or on land, depending on where they live. There are very few species of turtles, though, that have the ability to catch larger prey. Mm -hmm. And you've got to have some very special adaptations if you're going to go for something bigger. You've got to be camouflaged and you've got to be able to ambush that creature. So we're looking at turtles that are able to hide well and then strike extremely rapidly. And mm. I do have a very large friend with me today Yikes. who's able to do that. <laughs> Yikes. And I, um, I didn't have the pleasure of carrying the big friend in, but I, I watched as it was happening. I don't know if you want to get to him yet, uh, but you have some other habitats here, and I'm real curious yeah. to see the other types. We'll probably leave the big snapper for... You want to uh, finish oh. up with him? Yeah, we can maybe finish with him because sure. he seems like he might be a little... <laughs> little antsy pants. He's gonna, yes, he's gonna fill our table here. Oh, Let's I heard move somebody to the hissing. Aquatic side of our turtle species. This is our red eared slider turtle. Was he hissing at you? A little bit when he came out. <laughs> hissing is one way that they express their. Um, they're concerned that you may be threatening them. This turtle is not uh, handled regularly, although we use him for education. So he's not gonna be nearly as confident as my first turtle. He's pretty good size though. These red-eared sliders can grow to up to 12 inches. And this one um, is just about full grown. He could still add a few inches on there. But what's fascinating about this turtle is he was an original addition to the Douglas Hart Nature Center, and he was delivered after a car accident. If you take a close look at his shell, you can still see the indentation where his shell cracked open. Mm. And this dispels a lot of myths that kids come into the Nature Center with, believing that a turtle can simply take off their shell and find another one or, <laughs> or find a larger one. If we take a look inside the snapping turtle shell, what do you see down there? You see a spine. You see a spine, yep. Their, their spine and their ribs are actually melded into the shell. So when this guy's shell broke, he was in a life-threatening situation. Luckily, just like our bones can heal, his shell bone mended up, covered up that uh, wound, and he's doing very well today. How old is he? Uh, he has been with the Nature Center for at least 15 years, but wow. beyond that, I can't age him for you. Turtles really do not grow in a year-by-year -year sort of way that we can make that estimate. Their size depends more on what food is available to them and how big their habitat is. Mm -hmm. So um, Let's compare yeah. the box turtle to the water turtle. You don't have to get him out if you don't want to, but, yeah. you know, so he has to be in the water most of his life, whereas That's right. the box That's turtle right. doesn't know how to swim. You're right, and, and you'll notice so many adaptations just from his streamlined sort of torpedo body shape here to his webbed feet, which I don't know if I can get one to really stay out for us, but he does have a webbing between his toes to help him paddle through the water. You'll notice um, the beak in the front here. I call it a beak because it's really not that different from a bird beak. It's a carotenoid uh, structure that he can slice, he can bite, he can pull and grab with. 
um, and obtain his food, whether it's an insect or a fish or a piece of plant. But he's not actually able to produce the saliva to swallow that food. <laughs> so you can imagine what he has to do. He uses the pond or river itself to, to help lubricate his mouth and he can only eat while submerged in the water that way. How much time does he spend underwater as opposed to just chilling on a rock with a little bit of water underneath him? Well, you guessed right with this guy. Red-eared sliders are totally known for their basking, sitting uh -huh. out on the logs. And that's because they can't actually digest their food unless they raise their internal temperature. Being cold-blooded, they have to uh, absorb the sun's energy to get their temperature up to 65 degrees before they can do anything with that meal they ate this morning. So basking in the sunlight is a daily necessity for these turtles. And part of where they get their name, red-eared slider. They're gonna right. jump right off that log into the water. And red ears. you approach. Uh-oh, oh, he's kind of hissing too. <laughs> my, uh, so your advice is I shouldn't put my finger out in front of its beak? You should not, that's right. He's not a snapping turtle, but any turtle will do its best to defend itself when it feels frightened. And that could be biting, mm -hmm. and that would be a painful bite out of this guy. It could be scratching, mm -hmm. it could be kicking and struggling. If I had a musk turtle with me today, he might even secrete some very foul smelling uh, odors to kind of warn us that we need to get away. And these are all mm. ways that they protect themselves in the wild. Now, while I have this big guy out, let me introduce you to someone a little bit smaller for comparison. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> He's a little scrambler down here in this yes, container. Yes, yes. So, uh, although they look very similar as they grow up, you'll definitely notice how small this little painted turtle is. Oh my look goodness. Look at how tiny he is. Beautiful. I mean, they really are beautiful, especially his neon yellow head and his red neon stripes on his legs. You're right. They beautiful. get their name painted from their appearance of being a work of art, um, truly. and. He's so small because he started life uh, being hatched out of an egg. Here's a crushed up piece of egg. And so he began life even smaller than he is now. He's grown mm. significantly. How long ago do you think he was born? Well, you know, the sheer size, you would think baby. So I would say fairly recently. You would think he would have been. It, it's fascinating that since he's a painted turtle, he was actually born last fall. Whoop, hi there, buddy. He was actually born last fall. He hatched out of his egg in the turtle nest, which is located underground where the mother turtle laid the eggs. And being such a small turtle, he and his brothers or sisters stayed underground in that nest all winter long and hibernated. Oh, wow. And he only just this spring would have crawled out and started heading to the water to uh, begin his life. So he's actually lived for several months underground preparing mm -hmm. for this adulthood. How big will he guy. will he get as big as the other turtle that you had displayed? He'll be a little bit smaller than that red-eared slider. Uh, a little bit more modest size, but a very similar appearance as he grows up. I'd like to say um, around uh, seven inches across, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, when turtles are this small, I should point out, this is the period in a turtle's life where they are likely to be um, carrying bacteria that our body does not handle well. These are the turtles that you have to be careful to wash your hands with after handling as they could be carrying the salmonella bacteria. Um, larger turtles really do not uh, pose that same risk, but mm -hmm. it's these little guys that you need to be cautious His of. His life will be underwater on top of the water. Like when, when you walk by a pond or a lake and you see those turtles or even a stream, you see those turtles kind of chilling on the log. Is that a painted turtle? Or a sure, red sure. A painted turtle will also bask in the sunlight and they do have to come up to the surface no matter what to get breaths of air occasionally. However, the fascinating thing about these turtles is in wintertime they hibernate, right? Uh -huh. And we all know they hibernate down, way down at the bottom of the pond, mm -hmm. buried in the mud. So occasionally I'll get a clever student or camper ask me, well, how do they breathe down there? Oh, excellent question. It's a, it's a great question, isn't it? When you stop and think about it, um, these turtles have some incredible survival abilities, including things like sort of an antifreeze chemical in their blood and in their bodies that prevents ice crystals from forming. 
but they also have specialized skin that during hibernation can pull tiny amounts of oxygen directly out of the water and into their bloodstream. Mm. So little ways that help them to survive in almost completely anaerobic right. conditions, no right. oxygen. Well, I tell you what, we go from somebody that small to, I think we need to prepare the studio because <laughs> you've got a big guy with you. And if there's ever a, a time to build some suspense on what we're gonna see on the Paul Report, now would be a good time to, to gather the kids and get around the TV <laughs> because Dakota's got her job. Uh, you've got your job cut out for you with the guy that's in the blue tub. That's right. We're going to have an adventure here. We're going to be pulling our uh, the largest turtle I brought today out up here by the table so that you can get a better look at him. And the turtle we'll be looking at is the same turtle as you're seeing the shell here and the skull here. And of course, this is our big snapping turtle. Mm -hmm. um, you can see that sharp beak that he uses to catch his prey and in a moment you'll see his excellent camouflage that allows him to get close enough to do that. What is the prey for a, a snapper? Fish? Sure. They will definitely go for fish. Um, that's a protein packed stomach filling meal but on a day when fish aren't available they're going to go for anything they can get whether it's insects or um, crayfish or frogs or even the smaller turtle better watch out when those snapping turtles mm. are around they're looking for anything they can put in their bellies essentially mm -hmm. um, and they can grow to be quite large uh, snapping turtles can get over 50 pounds so we're talking about oh some very my. big turtles and they their life expectancy is the same as any other turtle it could be I think they can get up to about 50 years um, they don't quite get into that hundred ranges that we know of and you know you can always find that old old turtle at the bottom of the pond but this is one of our honestly our medium-sized turtles uh, oh snapping turtles at the nature center we have some massively large snapping turtles that I would not even want to attempt to lift but we're going to give this guy a try um, snapping turtles are edible and with the right license you can collect snapping turtles uh, however it is important to, no matter for what reason you're interacting with them, be extremely careful. Glad you're doing it. <laughs> they are dangerous. On and I'm glad you're the one handling it. And so I'll let you go to yeah, it. You're going to see me hold on to his tail for stability, but you wouldn't ever want to pick one up by its tail. It is attached directly into the spine, so that can lead right. to some serious health problems for the turtle. All right, let's see what we can do here. Oh, wow. And here we he go. is a big dude. <laughs> oh, my this goodness. This is a big turtle. And if you're getting some uh, look at the side there, you're going to notice he has a lot of meat on him. Oh, my. Extremely muscular. And this is what makes him attractive as a food source for humans, for raccoons, even for an eagle, perhaps. Now, if you wouldn't mind holding up that box turtle shell with the bottom on it, Look at how protected that box turtle is in life as right. soon as a predator arrives. I'm gonna flip this guy up just a little bit and you'll notice he has hardly any He has got some plastron. big legs. <laughs> he has hardly any shell on that belly, doesn't he? he just doesn't. leg meat showing. So this turtle has little choice but to have a very intimidating attitude and Quite. aggressive personality to protect his assets. Mm. <laughs> You'll also notice how camouflaged he is. He is trying to catch fish and he's hiding in the murk and that net can shoot out a good 10 inches to grab what he wants. So even though he looks short, how far away is don't he from put me? your hand near his head because he can, he can extend that neck significantly. Yeah, for sure. Those big feet that you're seeing are webbed and adapted to dig down into the mud to bury mm -hmm. himself or if it's a female to bury her eggs in the spring. And uh, these turtles. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's looking like, what turtle, is going isn't on? He? <laughs> he's going, what is going on? I want to get back to the pond. <laughs> this guy will be released as soon as I get back yes, in. Yes, he will. Now we have fish food inside the Douglas Hart Nature Center that any time a visitor is on the property, we encourage them to stop in and grab a bottle of fish food at no cost and take that down to the pond. You can throw it in and I guarantee you'll be seeing a variety of turtles swim up 
to have a bite with you. Oh my gosh, Dakota, I can't tell you how fascinating and exciting and wonderful today's episode was. Very, very informative. I learned that there are other species besides box turtles and snapping turtles here in Illinois. And I have to commend you for your handling of the big guy <laughs> in the blue tub. You did fantastic. So thank you so much for joining us for this episode of the Paul Report and giving us uh, some very, very useful information on the turtle. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you for having me and keep your eyes open for these guys. I sure will. And we hope to have you again another time to talk about another interesting uh, subject. So thank you for joining us for this episode of the Paw Report. Hope you enjoyed turtles today. And of course, Dakota's magnificent handling of that big snapper. We'll see you next time. Dave's Decorating Center is a proud supporter of the Paw Report on WEIU. Dave's Decorating Center features the Mohawk Smart Strand Silk Forever Clean Carpet. Dave's Decorating Center, Authorized Mohawk Color Center in Charleston. Okaw Vet Clinic in Tuscola and Dr. Sally Foote remind you to properly take care of your pets and are happy to help support the Paw Report on WEIU. Okaw Vet Clinic located at 140 West Sale Street in downtown Tuscola. More information available at okawvetclinic.com.